everyone, welcome to the Chem channel today. This is Xie Hang. In tutorial 21, I introduced using 3D bold plot to understand the charge starch process. So this time I will introduce another type of 3D bold plot, analyzing the phase angle with potential and frequency. If you're interested to know more about the 3D bold analysis, please refer to the original papers. A link to these two papers are offered in the description of the video below. Here is a brief reveal. Based on the shape of the 3D bulk plots, we can tell the differences between um, different charge storage mechanism. For electrical double layer capacitor, the bulk plot is nearly constant. The capacitance is the same over the potential and the frequency in the 3D bulk plot. The waterfall plot indicates pseudocapacitive and clear peak at low frequency means diffusion controlled. A combined pseudocapacitive and battery type are clearly shown on the 3D bulk plot as well. So in this 3D bulk plots, the y-axis is the real capacitance. If the y-axis is replaced by phase angle, it can give some other information. So I will first introduce what is the phase angle. The, the impedance phase angle for any component is the phase shift between the voltage across that component and current through that component. A component can be a resistor, a inductor, and a capacitor. Three key parameters are used to describe a component. The resistance are the reactance X and impedance Z. The resistance is frequency against the flow of current. It is present in all conductors and mostly notable in resistors. A uh, reactance is an inertia against the flow of current. It is present anywhere electric and magnetic field are developed in proportional to an applied voltage or current and it is most notably in inductors and capacitors. The impedance Z is a comprehensive expression of any and all forms of opposition to current flow, including both resistance and reactions. Z is present in all circle and in all components. So when an altering current goes through an impedance, a voltage drop is produced that is somewhere in between zero to 90 degree out of phase with the current. For a perfect resistor, the voltage drop and the current are always in phase with each other. So the impedance angle of the resistor is said to be zero degree. For a perfect inductor, the voltage drop always leads current by 90 degree. So the phase angle is 90 degree. For a perfect capacitor, voltage drop always lacks current by 90 degree. So the a capacitor's impedance phase angle is negative 90 degree. Because all components possess impedance, it makes sense to translate all the components value, the resistance and inductance and capacitance into common term of impedance as the first step in analyzing N circle. To find the total voltage across a circle with resistor, inductor, and capacitor. We cannot simply add the voltage together because the voltage of resistor and capacitor are considered to be imaginary quantity. So the total voltage across three elements is written as V equal to I multiplied Z and Z is written as resistance plus J multiply the impedance due to the inductor and minus the impedance due to the capacitor. The Z can be expressed by a complex number with the magnitude of the Z and the phase angle. And the magnitude of Z and the phase angle can, can be calculated based on these two equations. The phase angle assuming an equivalent series resistor capacitor model can be expressed by, in this equivalent circle, Phase angle equal to zero means pure resistive behavior. Equal to negative 90 degree means capacitive response. And negative 45 degree means diffusion limited response. 
So the rate limiting kinetics for charge storage can be inferred from the phase angle versus the frequency. Here shows the 2D phase angle boot plots of Maxine in three different electrolytes at a potential of negative 0.33 volt versus silver silver chloride. At this potential, there is a redox peak in CV for the sulfuric acid electrolyte, meaning surface redox reaction, whereas the CV in the other two electrolytes is rectangular. So what kind of information can we get from this figure? Uh, we first look at the low frequency. In the case of uh, lysine sulfate and sodium sulfate, the titanium carbide maxine electrode reaches to the phase angle about negative 85 degree, and it is only 73.4 degree in sulfuric acid electrolyte. The lower phase angle in the sulfuric acid electrolyte is due to the dominant redox process at low frequency in the acidic electrolyte. Frequency corresponding to a phase angle of negative 45 is considered as the crossover frequency between capacitive and resistive. In a sulfuric acid electrolyte, the crossover frequency is 0.3 Hz, meaning that the resistive component dominates when the charging time is below 3.3 seconds. However, in the neutron aqueous electrolyte, there should be no charge transfer across the maxing surface, and the crossover frequency was five times higher compared to that in the acidic electrolyte. It is worth mentioning that the crossover frequencies may vary depending on the thickness and the electrode architectures in the given electrolyte. The phase angle 3D bolt plot can be plotted to illustrate visually the correlation between phase angle versus frequency and the potential. For example, in the sulfuric acid electrolyte, a dip in the phase angle map was observed at a potential of 0.33 volt versus silver silver chloride in the maxine. This indicates that the kinetics of charge transfer reactions is slower compared to the double layer process. The maxine in sulfuric acid electrolyte shows potential dependent phase angle behavior at low frequencies, signifying combined capacitive and redox behaviors within the tested voltage window. In comparison, in the neutron aqueous electrolyte lysine sulfate, due to the capacity process in the neutron electrolyte, phase angle maps remain flat at low frequency and gradually decreases at high frequencies. We maintain this channel only on weekends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment sections. The videos in our ECAM channel are free and only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our video to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.